Hey, welcome to Geek Speak. We're glad you joined us. So, uh, what do you want to talk to about today, brother? Well, I had a friend at work ask me if I had an opinion on the new Little Mermaid trailer. Yeah. I've kind of been in a social bubble for the last year. I've kind of kept my way myself. Yeah. yeah. Isolated from a lot of stuff. So I couldn't tell him anything. So I had to actually look into it. Apparently there's a little mermaid trailer came out. And when you're listening to it, oh my God, the voice of that young lady. Uh, yeah. I think her name was uh, uh, Haley, uh, Haley, Haley. Bailey or something like that. Yeah. Holy crap, it was spot on. Even had the most beautiful vibrato, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. I'm not a singer. And then you see her. Well, yeah. she's an African American gal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the trailer. Well, apparently people are losing their shit over it, right? Yeah. yeah. And and he's an African American guy. The guy, my friend, that was asking me about it, and. Uh, of course, he had his opinion, and, and he was celebrating, which cool, yeah, you know, yeah. It, yeah. And uh, but I can went online and I seen where so many people were upset about it. And is she a new mermaid or is she Ariel? She is Ariel. Okay. She's the live. They're doing another live version. You okay. know how I feel about those. I don't right, care right, about right. live versions. But uh, so she's in the row, and. A lot of Caucasian people are up in arms because she's African American. Yeah, yeah. And I, I got no dog in the fight, but I can understand both sides. One group is happy because it, they're celebrating their culture. Right. They're seeing somebody in a row. But then again, the other side's like, well, we've always got fussed at for being white, a Hollywood whitewashing people, you know, yeah, we got yeah. white people playing yeah. Native Americans. The guy who voiced Abu for like 15 to 20 years on The Simpsons yeah, yeah. got canned yeah, because he's not Indian. Indonesian. Right, right. Although right. he's done it for 20, nearly 20-some 20 yeah. years. Yeah. So I understand both sides. My point of view, who freaking cares? Well, I mean, you say who cares, but yet the last Geek Speak you brought up that the Blue Fairy... Uh, yeah. True. I mean, here, here's my thoughts on it. Here's my thoughts on it. Uh, if you're part of a minority, right? Whether that's based on the amount of melatonin in your skin or your your choices in life, to me, a new original character that stands on its own represents you better than going back and taking existing characters. It's it's like. It's like when you go back and you take an existing character and race swap them or change them from a man to a woman, whether you take James Bond and make her a woman, which they're, they've thought about doing. Or, you, or Doctor Who into a woman. Or yeah, or Doctor Who's getting ready to be a, a black gay man in the, in the new series. Okay. That's like, and so, but I mean, the thing is, is, you know, taking, a, taking an existing character and changing it you're not really doing your your group any favors there. That's not really a victory. It's almost saying like, let's say, it's almost like saying, the only way you can be valid is that I take this existing character. There, there's a guy we talked about in Geek Speak before named Eric July, and he started the Ripperverse. He right. thinks that he, you know, he's a, he's a black young man. I don't know if he's young, he's younger than you and me, so we'll call him young. Okay. But, you know, he says when you take those existing characters and make them black, it's almost like you're saying the only way we can have legitimacy if we if, if there's a black Superman. Instead of there being a black hero that stands on his own that maybe has powers similar to Superman. Right. Uh, the only way you can be valid is if you is if you have a black Superman and to turn, turn Superman black. And I mean to me, you know, I watch what I want to watch. I don't want to watch what I want to watch, but. We were talk. I was talking to a subscriber, one of our subscribers, and commented the other day, and he was a black gentleman, and I, I forget his name, but I think he was over in Britain. But he was talking about, you know, how he kind he kind of agrees that it's it's ridiculous that we that we race swap stuff all the time, right? And it's it's Holly it's Hollywood. What it is, Hollywood. This is what Hollywood thinks. Okay, I've got. 
I've got this IP that I own and it's, uh, uh, let's say it's um, Lord of the Rings. And so Lord of the Rings is primarily white males that like that with a few white females. Well, I wanna bring in these other groups. So I'm gonna diversify that and try to bring it in thinking that, you know, I'll, I'll keep the, I'll keep the original group, you know, I'll keep right. the original group. And, but the thing is, uh, when you cater to a small group, when you, when you cater to a small group, sometimes uh, you lose part of the larger group. So it's kind of tit for tat. Now I could care, I'm not going to see, I'm not going to see Little Mermaid live action, regardless well, whether it's a so Asian person or Caucasian. Albert Einstein said something. It is nothing's good nor bad. It is only thinking that makes it so. Yeah. And I think back to Shawshank Redemption. In the original screenplay in the book, Red was a white guy with red hair, and that's why they called him Red. Yeah. yeah. But they hired the person that was best for that role. Yeah. So they got Morgan Freeman to play it. Nobody knew. Nobody was familiar with the screenplay. They just knew he did a freaking jo awesome job. Yeah. He was the best guy for the role, and he knocked it out of the park. Yeah. The thing is, is this young lady, you've got to hear her voice. She might be the best person for that role. They might have interviewed Caucasians, Asians, of all kinds of races. I think they just picked who was best for that yeah, role. I, but I think a lot of times Hollywood switches things up just to switch things up. And so, like, like for instance, like, for instance, I'm a big fan of, uh, first of all, I brought some show and tell. Yay. So uh, there's a comic book company called Black Box Comics, and they've got a comic that's called uh, uh, Shinokage, and it's a mixture of Japanese history, which I'm a huge fan of, okay. and Japanese mythology, which I'm a fan of. So it's like a revenge tale, and uh, it's got seven issues, and if you've never read it, pick it up. Probably gonna have a hard time finding it at most local comic book stores, but you can get it from mycomicbookshop.com. No affiliation to us. It's just a good online store. But to go back to our original point and talk about this, you know, I grew up, I love, I love uh, martial art movies. Yeah. So, you know, Bruce Lee movies, Chinese, I'm not Chinese, Japanese movies, you know, when I, when I watch a, a movie like uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, no Caucasians in it at all. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I don't have a problem. When I, when I watch Blade, you know, Wesley Snipes Blade. Right. You know, I thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm not African-American. Right. So the qualities I look for in a character are heroics, you know, loyalty. Right. And uh, uh, things like that. Th those characters that anybody can get behind. And so the race never was an issue for me growing up. I never watched Lone Wolf and Cub or read this comic and said, oh, there's no Caucasians in here. It's all Japanese people. <laughs> well, I'm not representative. If you've got to watch something and see yourself on screen, yeah. then you've got an ego problem. Right. If, you, if you can't see that we all are one race, and that's the human race, and that you can't look and see good qualities and ignore that other stuff. My gosh, man, I get so tired of hearing that crap. Yeah, I was right. raised in the 80s, and we, we didn't deal with that. We just went and watched a good movie, read a good comic, and enjoyed it. Right. Didn't have all that junk. So what else you got, brother? Okay, one thing that I am tore up about and I'm concerned about, you know I'm a DC fan, right? Yes. So back about a year ago, AT&T had merged Discovery with... Warner Brother Media. Yeah, yeah. And they started coming out with all these properties and everything and movies. And so as of late, they are canceling tons of stuff. Like, yeah, the, heard Bat, like the Batgirl movie. I yeah. was looking forward yeah, to that. They finished with it, yeah. 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 A lot of the TV programs that they were putting together, they canceled it. And, and everybody's kind of like, man, if this uh, Black Adam movie doesn't work, they're going to. Well, come to find out, because of some of the deals they've made, when they first bought it, <coughs> Warner Brother, they paid like $46 billion for it. In the last short amount of time, they have done lost $20 billion. They've lost almost half of what they spent. Oh, really? And there's rumors that the main reason they bought it was to try to flip it.
Oh yeah. Yeah, and and there's actually rumors that uh, Universal Studios and Capcom is looking at or kind of the same thing is looking at purchasing it, but. To make their money back, they'd have to get that forty-six thousand plus the twenty or billion plus the twenty billion, which would be sixty billion dollars to even break even. So I'm worried about those properties. Is there going to be any more DC movies? Is there going to be any more uh, I think like Young there, Justice cartoons and stuff? I think there will be. I mean, there always has been. I think there will be. I think the the guy that's in charge there, and I forget his name. It, you know he's canceled. He's trying to go through. They've been they've been hemorrhaging money. They've they've been losing money. So right. He's got to go through and he's got to look at everything, saying this is profitable and this is not. And from a business standpoint, you know he he watched the bat. He did a screening of the the Batgirl right. show and said it was total trash. And even though they'd spent over a hundred million dollars on it, it would be better for them to eat that hundred million dollars than it would be for them to release it as studio because it would hurt the brand so bad. And since he's in charge, it's nice to be king. Now, is that because he's afraid what it's going to affect the sale value of it? He said, it, he said, I mean, a, a bad movie can hurt a franchise. True. So, so, so. But uh, spending that much money and just throwing it out the window, it does just as much damage. It does a hundred million dollars worth of damage. If you, yeah, well, if you only made back half of that, you've still made more profit than nothing at all. Yeah, well, I guess that's, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that's his choice. I mean, you know, I kind of respect the guy if he looks at it and says, you know, so you don't want to throw good money after bad. If maybe the special effects wasn't done on it, maybe it wasn't totally ready, and maybe he just looked at the rough cut and was like, no, it, it's just not worth it. There's been projects I started that I realized half through that, you know, you know, I, I just need to cancel them. I need to move on. But anyway, so next topic. Did, have you ever watched any of Gindi Tartakovsky's uh, Primal, a Primal cartoon, Caveman, about Spear and Fang? Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, like yeah. one or two of them. Yeah, first of all, Gindi Tartakov, he did Samurai Jack, which me and my grandson Ronan's a huge fan of. Well, nobody does animated action as good as Gindi. In fact, he did those, remember the little Clone Wars? Yeah, uh, thing the little, that ran for a while. He did those. Well, he, he come out with Primal, and so it's a, a story about a caveman. Hardly any talking at all in the entire series. Yeah, I think series. the one I remember there was like a dinosaur that had been damaged, and he was trying to protect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the issues. So they yeah. got two seasons. I mean, you've got to check them out. You got to check them out if you get a chance to watch them. And uh, I mean, they're they're amazing. Nobody does action the way he does. And I mean. To tell a story with little or no words mm -hmm. takes skill, right? You know, and so the animation style is a very similar to the Samurai Jack animation style. And I care, I could care less about cavemen mm -hmm. or dinosaurs. You know, uh, uh, I could care less. But that is so well written. You just really get into those characters and brutal. I mean, what's called primal. I mean, you know, when they have death scenes or the violence is really over who the puts top. This out? Uh, Adult Swim puts it out. Oh, really? Yeah. So they can yeah. even get that rough on the. Oh swim. man, it's 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 uh yeah yeah it's uh huh. n I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's for young kids, uh, but but uh, I, I would let my grandson watch it. He's ten. That'd be good for him. Cool. But anyway, so uh, get anything else? Not that I've got. No, I'm not. Okay. Getting that what one. about? Uh, have you ever watched an Amazon show called Britannia? Nope. Most people have it. <laughs> it's a story about ancient Ireland, which that's where our people come from. But but it's actually set over, it's the Celts that are set over in Britain. The reason it's called Britannia. But it's got, do uh, you remember the guy who played Governor in The Walking Dead, David Morrissey, I think? He yeah. plays a villain. He plays a real good villain because I don't know if you've ever seen an interview with him. He's kind of a butthole in real life. Oh, okay. But but uh, uh, it's got a, a fantastic cast. There's a guy that's in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's got the wooden eye. Yeah. His name's Mackenzie Crook. Yeah. He plays a couple different roles on it. And have two twin brothers. And I mean, amazing actor. You don't pick that up in that little comedic role and a lot of the things that he's done in the past. Mm -hmm. But but uh, uh, yeah, he's 
He's he's fantastic an actor. But sit over in like uh, 400 between 400 and, and 500 AD, and uh, the you know they told the, the producers they said you know look, uh, it's where the Romans invaded mm -hmm. Britain. He's like look we know about 40 percent about the Romans, we know about 20 percent about the Celts. We don't know anything about the Druids. So there you go, go with it. And so they, they, it's a fantasy drama. So, you know, they've taken the little bits of history that they know, and they try to create a show around it. But I mean, there's not, I mean, I said McKenzie Crook, but the acting is just fantastic. So is it a drama or a comedy? It's a drama, it's okay. a drama. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's had three seasons. About Druids. It's about Druids and Celts. Huh. Yeah, oh, it's so good. I mean, if you watched it, I mean, there's no doubt you'd like it. Huh. And so it's on Amazon, the first two seasons. Uh, the th to see the third season, you have to get a subscription to something called Epic. Currently, that may change. Amazon may eventually carry the third season. And uh, uh, there's rumors they're working on a fourth. But, uh, uh, you know, people going off about House of Dragon and Rings of Power, both of which I haven't watched. I've been watching uh, Britannia. And, right. man, it's 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 unbelievable you never hear anybody talk about it so anyway you got anything else well, i mean i can pull something out of my butt oh don't do that <laughs> yeah don't do that <laughs> what about what about uh did you watch any invincible on amazon i watched an episode or two i watched uh uh it was pretty much towards the end where the father revealed who he actually was. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, Invincible is, is written by Robert Kirkman, and, and you guys know him from Walking Dead. and uh, But he did a comic book series back before Walking Dead, and it ran about 144 issues, and it was called Invincible. It's about this young boy. Imagine if you were the son of Superman. That's kind of the premise. Right. So, so your father's super well-known, the greatest hero of all, and 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 you're just coming into your superpowers, and he's trying. Everybody's got these big expectations from you, and that's as far as I go because I don't want to spoil it. But they they ha the comic book series was great, and it's ended. The um, voice but, actor, the guy that play, does the voice for the father. Yeah, this guy that does. Uh, um, yeah, uh, James James Jameson. I, I yeah. do. I can't think of his name. Put yeah. it in the comments if y'all yeah. can remember, but. Yeah. I love his voice yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's a great, that's a great animated series. It's it's uh they it's been one season, but Amazon's already paid for two more, and uh, uh, it's not for kids. So is the comic still running? No, the comics ended. Well, comics how are you ended. gonna keep? Because didn't they kind of cap it off there at the end? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 not the for, no. There's there's plenty of stories to tell. I could run on for several seasons well, I before they covered the 144 issues of the comic. Okay, I just yeah. didn't want them to yeah. do a Game of Thrones thing. Oh and no, just start no, no, pulling the crap out no, of no, no, no. They're going to they're going to end it. But yeah, it's it's uh, uh it's well animated and well written. And to be honest with you, far better than Walking Dead. I mean, that, to me, that's Robert Kirkman's best work so far. Huh. So, you done? I think I'm done. All right, man, we're done. See you next month.